Welcome back to Handmade. I'm Liz, and this is a tennis racket, if you're not aware. You might remember that a few of us went to the world's longest yard sale, and I had my eye out for one of these. This project will be a grand slam, and I can't even <laughs> tell. <laughs> not because I'm an amazing player, but because there are so many cool things that you can turn these into. They're actually surprisingly easy to find, just because they're not ideal for actually playing tennis, but they're too pretty to throw away. And so today I'm going to take this racket and some yarn and show you how to create a really cool piece of textile art. Let's get started. So a lot of vintage rackets that you might find will have this cover. Um, for this project, I'm going to remove it, but I'm going to save it for a future project. I have some ideas for this, but let me know in a comment below, what should I do with this? If you do this project, just look for a racket without any broken strings. So the first step of this project is to sketch out the design. I'm gonna do that with some colored pencils and graph paper. Once you find the center point, you can start plotting out your design. Of course, you can create anything you like, but I'm going to put a Swiss cross in the center and work out from there. The great thing about doing this on graph paper is you can just make sure you have room for everything you'd like to incorporate and that it's not off center in the end. And then on the top and bottom of my center design, I'm just going to fill in with some different textures of yarn. So my design is done and I'm ready to get started, but I am going to leave some spaces in the top and bottom for some super chunky yarn, and we'll get to that in a minute. So I have a few different yarns here. I went with a palette of a mustard yellow, plum, and cream. Uh, yellow is my favorite color. It's my power color. So you want a mix of colors, but you also want a few different textures. I have some thinner yarn, some chunky yarn, and then some super chunky wool for an accent. I have a couple of different yarn needles here in different sizes for the different yarn thicknesses. I also have a crochet hook to help pull through the thickest yarn. So I am just taking my chunky mustard yarn and threading it through this really, really big needle. So you want a piece of yarn that's a couple of feet long and just thread a small section of it through just so you can work with the yarn but don't tie off the end. I'm going to transfer some of the key measurements of the pattern onto the racket by adding dots with a permanent marker. These will be covered up by the yarn later. All right, now that I have my first design plotted out, I'm ready to start weaving. I'm just threading the chunky yarn through the square on the edge of my Swiss cross and I'm putting it up and over all of the squares that are part of that shape. Once you get it started, tie off the end so you can pull it tight. I really love this wrapping technique because it creates a design really quickly, but at the same time, it's super visually impactful. Just make sure that you have the same number of threads in each square to keep it looking symmetrical. Houdini technique. So I finished the center pattern with the mustard yarn. Now I'm going to fill in with these smaller Swiss crosses and the same wrapping technique with our plum yarn. I actually love this. This is like literally my ideal project. Like a very tedious, time consuming, uh, math oriented apparently that I have to complete on a deadline <laughs> with no practice. <laughs> so looking at the design, I'm actually going to go back and add a little bit more yellow on the sides to fill in. And you know, your guide is just that, it's a guide. So feel free to edit on the fly like I am. I'm finished with the center pattern and now I'm going to create some extra interest on the top and bottom by adding some woven rows of a few different thicknesses of yarn. As you create each row, just push it down to create one stripe. So I'm leaving a space on the last line for a section of the super chunky wool roving pieces. And for this, because it's so thick, I'm going to use a crochet hook to push it through the squares of the racket. And I'm doing this step last so that this really chunky yarn does not get frizzy. So this 
is looking really cute. Uh, but to put it over the top, I'm going to finish it with some pom-poms and a giant tassel. And I'm keeping it really long because I want to top it with a couple of pom-poms I made earlier. All right, I think we're finally done. This is a little time consuming, but you know, it's like a perfect thing to do while you're watching your favorite show. Well, I promised that this project was going to be a grand slam, and I think it totally delivered. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and tell me, what would you do with a vintage tennis racket? And what should I make with that tennis racket cover? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!